My anaconda don't. My anaconda don't. My anaconda don't have much story, so this will be a quick one. Yes, the plot of Anaconda is short, simple, and more spectacle than substance. Kinda like Nicki Minaj. Anaconda is a movie about a film crew making a documentary on a remote tribe in the Amazon. On their journey, they stumble into a mysterious macho man who later convinces them to hunt down an anaconda. And as a viewer, you're left with a skin-tingling anticipation to find out. Will Ice Cube challenge the anaconda to a rap battle? Loser has to leave the rap game for good. You know, because anacondas do a different kind of rap. <laughs> I'm so silly. Starring alongside Ice Cube, we have Jenny from The Block, Oh Wow Wilson, the hot mum from Eight Legged Freaks, and as I was doing some research, I discovered Frank Welker did the vocal effects for the anaconda. This is the same guy who did the vocal effects for the spiders in Eight Legged Freaks. Ah, see, it's all coming around full circle. It's all connected, man. The story of Anaconda begins when the documentary crew hop on board this raggedy old boat. Ice Cube is the cameraman. Jenny from the dock is the director. There's an extremely British guy. Morning. And British guy is the presenter. There's also a scientist guy who's in bed with a neck injury for most of the movie. We also have Matteo, the El Capitan. The hot spider mum from Eight Legged Freaks is the production manager. And Oh Wow Wilson is the sound guy. Double check your gear, make sure it's all on board. Pray you didn't forget your bug spray. <laughs> you have no power here. Shortly into their journey along the Amazon River, they find a stranded sailor who jumps onto their boat like a frenzied bear. I'm not sure if this guy who we just met is sketchy or not. Maybe the music and facial expressions will provide some clues. I for one can't wait to be super surprised when he turns out to be dangerous later on. As thanks for saving his life, oh ooh, wait, we didn't give him a name yet. Trustworthy Terence, yeah that name feels right. Trustworthy Terence says he knows the location of this mysterious tribe and he's willing to help them get there. But I suspect that's not really what he's going to do. The scientists soon become suspicious of Terence's bullshit when Terence's directions conflict with the scientists' research on the tribe's location. I trap snakes for a living, and I'm sure you're very good at it. I locate tribes for a living. I'm very good at that. I'm not really sure why they bothered listening to this stranger's advice if they already had a scientist on board who knew the exact location of the tribe. But I guess we gotta have that conflict. <laughs> Luckily for Terence, the scientist guy gets a wasp stuck in his throat. And that's how he ends up being bedridden for the rest of the movie. So now the crew just have to trust this stranger's guidance. Along the way, there's a large wall blocking their path, and the crew believe Terence when he claims he knew nothing about this wall, even though he's packing just the right amount of dynamite to blow up this wall. Raining Snakes isn't just a great name for a metal band, it's also a great visual clue to expect more snake related stuff in the upcoming scenes. Which is great news because we're very excited to see the anaconda chomp down on Oh Well Wilson. And surprise surprise, it's kind of Terence's fault that Oh Well got killed by the anaconda. Just like how he indirectly got the captain killed earlier. Yeah, I kind of skipped a few minutes to accommodate the Owen Wilson death surprise joke. Was it worth it? Absolutely. Well, at least now we can look forward to seeing how Terence will get everyone else killed. You brought the devil! <laughs> There's the devil inside everyone. <laughs> Jenny from the tank top attempts to bait Terence into a trap using her pheromones. And even though he sniffed out her intentions, he was then outplayed by a British boy and his trusty nine iron. I'm still not sure why British boy took his golf clubs on board a rickety riverboat on the Amazon. 
the worst place on earth to practice golf apart from an aquarium. But that's Terence taken care of for now, until he starts killing again. Yeah, you probably should have thrown him in the river like you suggested earlier. In this scene, the boat is stuck for the second time in the movie, and the anaconda takes the opportunity to eat British Boy, in the only death that can't directly be blamed on Terence in some way. But then again, he did just kill Hot Spider Mum, so he's still on my bad people list. And I advise you to keep him on yours, because you know he's going to carry on being a bad boy. Don't get me upset. <laughs> Even though Terence gets taken out once more during a scuffle, he somehow survives being tranquilised and floating down the Amazon River face first for god knows how long. This river can kill you in a thousand ways. Jenny from the plot shoots some chunks out the anaconda's head, which is weird because later on the anaconda has a fully healed head on its body neck. I'm interrupting my own review to uh, reveal this. So look at the uh, skin colour of the anaconda here, right? And now if we go back to the previous clip, what colour is the anaconda? It's a nice green yellow. But what's happened here? Now it's a purplish blue. What's up with that? Ice Cube and Jenny from the shot go in search of fuel in this dusty old abandoned yard, where nothing could possibly go wrong. They wake up tied up as bait for the anaconda. Terence had a plan in his head which was always going to fail. I mean, if this thing can reattach its own brain chunks, what are you going to do with a piddly little crossbow? So yeah, Terence gets killed off. Now I'll give this movie some credit for grossing me out. Yeah, the anaconda baths up a soggy Terence covered in applesauce, I guess? As movie villains go, I really liked whoever this was. <laughs> I don't know the actor's name. He was basically John Locke from Lost, but with a little South American spice thrown in. So anyway, they find a way to set the anaconda on fire. But the dang thing still survives, so Ice Cube slams an axe into its head. At this point, the anaconda finally gets bored of cheating death and sinks into the murky waters forevermore. Until the anaconda sequel. With a well deserved feeling of victory, the remaining crew sail off towards home, and as an added bonus, they come into contact with the remote tribe who they were looking for. This remote tribe then immediately butchered the outsiders for killing their pet snake. 